play with doing so old. It's, the only, it's the only way you're going to get used to it. Remember, your hands have to change. You're not just going to keep that same uh, figure four on the other side. The idea is, always think in your mind, toes going to bump on the inside. Toes don't go on the outside. So you're always trying to push that toes on the inside, like this, not on the outside. Right? So if you've got it, you think, it's done all right, you know you need to change your grip. All right? So it's the same with that. Once you set it up, depends on how your hands are, you've got to be able to put their toes into their bump. Right? Change in the back pocket, we call it. Put the change in the back pocket, or toes up the ass. Um, right, so now I'm going to do a thing called a can opener, not tin opener. Tin opener is what dirty dogs do when they can't break your guard. Yeah? <laughs> Bores me, really irritates me. Someone tin openers me, I try and really hurt them because it, <laughs> it hurts your neck. Right? And it's so, I don't know, stupid. It, it drives me potty when someone's cranking like hell in it because I'm rubbish. And I was saying, come on, mate, I've got work tomorrow. There's no need to do this. We're all mates here. Don't crank on my neck. To get out of the habit of doing tin openers on people's necks. It really hurts. However, the can opener, that's really fun. You get to put them to sleep. <laughs> I love sleeping. Um, now, we're going to do the easy approach first, the easy setup. And then we'll do the more complicated setup that absolutely deadens your shoulder. And that's the idea of it. By the time you've got it, if you've defended it, yeah, you have defended it, but your right arm's dead. So you're going to get mounted and tapped out. So it's such a good thing to do because it gasses the other person's closest limb out. That's a good thing about it. But we'll do it from the um, an easy approach, just so you can see the mechanic of it first. Now, this setup is quite an easy and good setup. If you notice, in a minute, I was, I was halfway there with the uh, electric chair swing, just um, without, the, without the leg. If you notice how I was when I landed here, that arm's isolated. This arm here. <coughs> this is the arm that I want, and it's the arm that's important. But the way we're going to set it up from is, we're just going to go knee on belly, and they're going to frame heavy. They're going to give me a really strong frame. And we're going to take that frame away from them, and we're going to trap that arm straight away. And then it's all about having really good hip work. If any of you guys struggle on, on for example, if you're just in side control and they're trying to recover guard, turn into me. You're not used to turning into your hip straight away so they can't get your leg. And just isolate and just spinning around in your hip, making sure your hands up next to their hip as much as possible. Then you may struggle with this. It's all about getting used to your hip movement, going from twist to side control, regular, scarf, and likewise. If you struggle with that, this may be a bit hard for you. If you're really good at that, you think, why don't I do this submission all the time? It's right there. So we're going to do it from the unbelly. Um, and they're going to frame out really, very really strong on your hip. Now, when I play knee on my belly, I literally put my knee on their belly. I don't put one foot on the floor, one knee on his belly. It's knee on belly. Don't do this. Put your knee on his belly. All my weight is on him now. Now half my weight is on him. So I'm always heavy. I make him react. I'm not going to stay here long. I'm waiting for him to push down on my knee or push down on my hip or try and isolate my leg because then it gives me something to trap. I'm not going to stay here and go, yeah, I went in, whoo. Uh, I'm looking for stuff. I know he's going to push down on something. I know he's going to, oh, wow, nice one. I've got his arm now. So I look for it. I put so much pressure on his stomach that he won't stay there that long. He'll have to move. So we're just going to go perfect knee on belly. We're just going to take his head. He can hold his shoulder, hold his chest, smash his arm in, or hand on the mat. We're just going to hold here for now. Just it's only a drill. And he's going to give me a really good frame against my hip. Because he thinks I'm passing. He's going to try and isolate. He doesn't want me to go like that. So he puts all of his strength into this, stopping me doing that. But I've encouraged him to do it. I want him to do it. Because now I'm going to pull the arm away, trap it. So I grab here, not here. If I grab here, I've got absolutely nothing. If I grab here, I've got absolutely everything. Right? So I grab here and I pull it up. Once I pull it up, I step down. And then I hook the back of his head. And I trap that arm. Now he can do what he wants with that arm, I don't really care. But I'm just going to keep it. That is the most important part of this arm. Now, before I move into the can opener, I have to try and get rid of as much air between me and him as possible. So I go around even more. 
beautiful thing about this, I'm all heavy on his chest, I'm all on his face, I'm actually, if you look, making him face away. How is he going to shrimp into me if he's facing away? He can't do that bridge escape I was doing earlier because I'm heavy on his shoulders. His legs are useless because you can't reach my legs. So I've got a good position here. This arm's going to go dead because he's going to be fighting it. So I, don't, I can stay here for a minute to slowly work. So once I'm here and I've got that arm all isolated, I then switch my grip. To give myself a bit of control, I just grab his shoulder I switch round deep as I can. I'm looking for his armpit to try and grab his armpit. If I can't get it straight away, I'll get it when I start moving round. Now, once I've got round, I plant my hand on the floor so he can't shrimp into me. My right leg goes low. I don't want to get rid of this until I'm ready to go. And I'm still looking for that armpit. Still looking for it. Once I feel I've got it, I can lower my hip down. Creep round. It's horrible already, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and I'm not even squeezing. It's such a pressure on the shoulder and the neck. He's thinking, oh my god, what is this? There's no point he can defend because now his arm's dead. I've been on it for a minute. His arm's gone. It's jacked. So I'm getting lower and lower. And I'm squeezing all together. Now, the, the pressure is this side, obviously, and that side. Now, sometimes you can get attacked like this. Because you've been there for a minute, he <coughs> wants you to tap you out. He's like, my god, I've been here for ages. His arm's totally gone. Oh, this is getting worse. God, but yeah. I'm tapping. I'm so bored in this position, they'll tap. But if you don't get the tap on the stubborn mother, and you're here and you're squeezing, you only do it for about eight seconds, don't gas yourself out. Squeeze, 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 you're not getting it. All right, then I'm gonna to switch to a DAS style grip, a lot tighter. Like I say, you can get it there, but if you don't, you're gonna make sure you go onto your forearm first, and you're gonna creep, 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 creep up to your tricep, and just squeeze that way. But it's very important that you do not lose that arm. If you lose that arm, you've got to start all over again. But, like I say, the good thing about the submission, you can keep hitting it, keep hitting it. Third time, his arm's going to be dead. Oh, God, have it. <coughs> yeah, honestly, your arm goes so dead, like, oh, it becomes weak. Because it's got lactic acid, it's burning now. He's got no strength in it whatsoever. So we're just going to start from here. Take that arm. Okay? So now I've got here, you can go on the fucking really matter, because he ain't going to bridge on me. We go here, nice and heavy. Look, like I say, I try and get as underneath and as squeezed up as possible. I'm not here, I go really high. Can you see? There's no gap whatsoever there. I've taken away all the gap. And if he fights that, just try and get you out of that. If he does that for a minute, a minute and a half, it's going to go dead. Believe me, it will go dead. He'll give up. When he's give up, given up, then you give up. Give up. <laughs> when you give up on that, when he's given up, then you move. I'm not going to work it while he's fighting. There's no need to. Just chill out. Work it. I'm not going to work it, baby. <laughs> I'm in a good position. Why do I need to move? So I'm going to let him thrash around like a nutter. I'm going to let him tie himself up. So then once I've got this, then I switch my grip. I grab the thing. Pop. Nice and deep. He's still not got that arm. I can hold on to anything. Oh, what can I get? There you go. I've got his armpit. Once I've got it, hand goes on the mat. So he can't turn into you and you drop your right hip first. Then you lower this into him. Low, you've got to be low. Do not give him one bit of daylight to escape. I even squeezed. He's hating it already. Here, yeah, that I connect my See his face changing. It's a horrible, horrible submission and it is a time submission. You've got to take your time on it. Don't rush it. Make this side of his body dead. By the time you've drilled it, you're like, oh my God. And all you're doing is drilling it. So make sure you are very tight with absolutely everything. Nice and tight, his arms all looking <coughs> isolated. Get that tighter, real tight. Switch your grip, hand on the mat. This leg has to go first, so you can get lower look. Then you go that way look. See how low I am? I'm not doing that. I'm lowering my hip down. I want to be on the floor as much as I can next to him because he's not going to escape. Okay, guys, draw that. Put the can over there. Very good submission.